Stop kemudian. So where are we at on time? We got a few minutes. Is Justin chiming in? Oh, okay. All right. Oh, you're gonna have to do that. Appreciate that. Huh? I'm gonna be anonymous tonight. <laughs> All right. We will now open the Estacada City Council workshop. Uh, we have the rest of the wastewater facility plan review. And you're coming back to us with new and interesting information. Is that right? Certainly interesting for me. All right. Good information for everyone. Yes. Good. Good. Well, go ahead and take it away, and we'll try to get as much of this in as we possibly can. Excellent. I'm Kirk McLeod with Craig McLeod Engineers. So, the last month we had a workshop where we talked, we had a city council meeting actually, talked about the location of the wastewater plant. So the feedback I got told me that you were interested in looking at alternative sites. So what I've done, and I think each of you have received in your packet, probably electronically, I modified the facility plan and I tried to make all the edits either in a strikeout or in red text. So you can see what I have uh, evaluated and included. And then tonight, what I wanted to do is bring, I brought you a summary sheet. You can, I left each of your places that just shows the four locations that we were contemplating and each component of all the impacts to the collection system and to the wastewater treatment plant. So what I thought we'd do is just walk through each of those. And although, I don't know if you have questions on the facility plan or on any of the edits of the facility plan, if we want to talk about that first. But okay, well, the, the papers I brought you tonight, the first page is just a summary of all the cost estimates for each alternative. And then the second one, I made a plate that shows the locations where just arbitrary, but I stopped at Hypo Road as one location, I stopped at Folsom Road as the uh, second location. So it, it shows the existing treatment plant site. It shows that site in the industrial park that we had contemplated also along Farmstead Road. And then the second page, I brought you just to give you some orientation as to where these pump stations and facilities are throughout the city. So both of these plates are in the facility plan. So what I've done is broke down all the cost of the entire one to five year CIP. So the, the bottom line you can see on the cost summary sheet is what the city of Estacative should anticipate for a, in the next five years that you're going to need to undertake. So I have four different sites. The first is the existing shops site, which we talked quite a bit last month. Second one is the industrial park site. That would be if we were to purchase property along, uh, generally it was, we thought that along Farmstead Road, there was a 27 acre parcel that the property owner was very interested in working with the city. So that was where we contemplated the site would be. The third would be if we just continued north to Hypo Road and then, continuing further north to Folsom. So both Hypel and Folsom are outside the urban growth boundary. So they're, they're a long range concept. So it's really a holistic approach at where you place your wastewater plant. It's the kind of thing that as we're doing your plant now, we wish maybe that discussion had occurred 40 years ago, 50 years ago. Uh, but you have the opportunity now to think ahead for the next 50 years. The, the topography of all the ground from the industrial park all the way to Folsom is ideal for just laying a gravity trunk sewer. Uh, if you were to place a gravity trunk sewer, it allows us to eliminate some of the pumping improvements that are in the facility plan now. It also allows you to serve all of that area. So if your annexations 
of the U into the UGB extend north, all of that can be served by gravel. So that's a, it's a real benefit that has a cost to it though. So as you go through these four columns, you see our first column is at the existing shop site. I put an asterisk on land cost because if we didn't use that land, we potentially could relocate the public works shops. And I had estimated a value of about $2 million for that riverfront property, eight plus acres. <clears throat> so the bottom line is that one to five year CIP is about 19.6 million. Uh, and if, if we were to uh, use that, we lose potential for selling that land. That has, that has an impact. Quite, it's hard to quantify what that impact is. We've had that same opportunity uh, for us to put some shops on that site. So if there was pressure to develop riverfront property, that's again, something to consider to relocate the public works shops. The second site we talked a little bit about last month, and that's the industrial side along the farmstead. Uh, we have the same cost on all four columns for the treatment plant. When we move into the industrial park site, we're, we're buying land that's inside the urban growth boundary. So that I put a $2 million price tag on that, $200,000 an acre, anticipating we would buy 10 acres of property. And in that, that case, we would relocate the public works shop there, and that would free up the existing water plant site and the public works shop site. And when I estimated $2 million for the public works shop site, I had anticipated a portion of the and beyond that would be to our expenses to reclaim the land. So I have money in the estimate to, to demo the existing concrete basin and the entire wastewater plant. So moving the wastewater plant out, I think our net value so as you go down the list, you can see that if we go to the industrial park site, we have, uh, let me explain to you my items in the far left column. So the treatment plant itself is planted, the land cost itself is planted, right? The wastewater treatment plant pump station, that's if we relocate the plant from where it is now, we would need one major pump station at that location. So I call that the wastewater treatment plant pump station. So you see that pump station is required in all options except build at this shop site. That was $3.1 million. And there's details of all the cost estimates in each one of the four heads. The next one down is the Timber Park pump station. And if we uh, see the, the existing plant with the existing Timber Park pump station, we don't have any cost. But if we send our float north to the industrial park or beyond, then we have some uh, cost to modify the Timber Park. And I just said it wrong. We have the same cost on all four. So under the first option, if the treatment plant is at the existing public workshop site, we still have to upgrade the timber of our company. Half the will not be adequate for our 20-year projected return. But if we go to the industrial park site or the high school or all this Fulton, timber park still gets modified. It's a little different modification. The next one down is the northwest. UGB pump station. So the urban growth boundary was expanded some years ago that brought in land that was below what the campus pump station could serve. So to serve that, we simply need the pump station down at the far north edge of the industrial park, maybe the northwest corner would be ideal. Uh, and what we anticipate is uh, building a new station or either if we use the Farmstead Road site, or if we use the existing public workshop site, you can see on my survey. If we go further north to Hypo or Fulton, we can serve the entire industrial park by ground. So, under, under uh, all four options, we plan to abandon the campus pump station. So, we would abandon that station and build a new gravity line to carry all that existing system to the far north corner of the urban growth boundary for the pump station. So under the existing shop site and the industrial park site, they both would be a pump station. Under the anything further north of the urban growth boundary, we can serve by ground. Next one is the raw sewage pump. So that's a pump station we anticipate that would be at the sewage plant. So right now we have the plant. The first thing we have is the raw sewage pumping chamber. 
uh, they would be integrated to the with the plant that's for them. We would need that if we were to build a plant at the existing shop site. If we were to put the plant at the industrial park on Farmstead, we would not let we put the plant at that location. We ended up discharging our force tank right into the treatment plant. So the wastewater treatment plant pump station, the timber park pump station, those two emerge into a common sense plan. And then the Northwest Urban Growth Boundary Pump Station, it would all actually be a force base. We could put the plant anywhere we want, industrial park, and with those force base, we'd actually pump right up into the top of the tank. So you don't need the pump station at this waste plant, the new wastewater treatment plant site. So that, that was a, a million three for that station. You do need it for, if we need the station on the public workshop site, or if we go north of the UV, we have a gravity pipeline headed to the north. And then at some point, we have to lift it up into the basin. Next one down is the gravity trunk main. So at the existing shop site, that's one of the big benefits. There's no trunk main required. Uh, it's very minor. We're going to build a pipeline across the street from all of that public workshop site. Uh, if we go to the industrial park, which is like I mentioned now, we don't have a trunk main because the pump station pours right into the new treatment plant and the cost of the pump station includes the force main to that location. But if we go to Heifel or to Folsom, where we can now collect the industrial park by gravity and collect all the area north of the UTV by gravity, we have a new trunk sewer. So it's a Heifel, uh, I don't have the footage, I think it was 9,000 feet. Pulses, probably about half of that. So the cost we have a million five to get the high pulse. We have a two million seven that we need to get the pulse. So that includes purchasing easements along the way and the construction of a, of a large draft. Then the last item of the of the uh, project in order is the river alcohol. Of course, if we leave the plant where it is, we use we use the existing. Alcohol. If we go to any other site, we have to build new alcohol. So the industrial park site is uh, a challenge. I mean, we have a mineral operations across the city. We have gravel pit. Uh, we've got. We may be able to come back to the just downstream of the dam. Uh, one of the benefits, as you're aware, is if any of these other three sites, the industrial park or the north of the UK, we just charge downstream of the dam. Yeah. Uh, however, our water quality meets the water quality standards, so it's not a big issue one way or the other. So the river outfall, if you see on this other plate I provided to you, the orientation of the river versus just a rough spot on Heifel and Folsom. So Folsom has an advantage in a quite big portion of the river compared to Heifel. Heifel also has a large residential area along the river that we certainly would want to avoid. So uh, the, at the location on the industrial park, you see it's rather close to the river. We'd have to go to the north, catch that little box below from the river. So when you consider just the treatment plant, uh, the summary of costs are for the existing shop site, we have a summary total of 18960 the industrial park site, 22,870, is about a $4 million difference between the existing site or the industrial park site. And then if you go to Heifel, we're buying quite a bit more capacity and planning for the future. So we have a cost of 25,2. And then if we go all the way to Folsom, we're at 24,9. So the difference in those two is the alcohol cost of the Heifel River is better at Folsom than it is. Then the one other thing I put on this summary sheet is what we see happening right now is the development along Eagle Creek and along Goose Road. Mm -hmm. So we're seeing uh, the Northbrook subdivision at Dugan Estate, which will mandate that we get the Eagle Creek pump station built, which is maybe a thousand feet or 500 feet short of Goose on Eagle Creek Road. So we, we know that's going to be needed in the next few months. So I included that in. A one to five year capital plan, which on the bottom there you see all four of those goals. 
Let me just also say too that I've had this this last week we received a submittal and Taylor and the city received a submittal for the second phase of the industrial park uh, industrial park three I think they call it we, we received phase two of industrial park three but they had anticipated sewer so I don't know the only way they're going to get sewer service. Is with that northwest UGB poster. So I don't know what they're thinking, but I think that the plan review at this point is simply going to say that there's a sewer service available without submission. I've also heard discussions of service further north beyond the phase two of the industrial park, which would all also require the population to serve. And also phase one of the industrial park three has been approved is under construction now. They have about, I think, four lots, maybe six lots. They could not be served by gravity, but they have put in on the interim, they have put in a small individual fire pump with four stands back to the gravity sewer that's been served by the campus pump. So we're starting to see pressure in the northwest industrial area, the northwest urban growth boundary area, to perhaps see that northwest UGB pump station. We need for that. In the near future, so I, I can give you also one more kind of a holistic overview. If if we see development pressures in the northwest industrial area, if we see that imminently, then we would probably rethink the Eden Creek pump station, the seven hundred thousand dollar project, and perhaps divert that fund to. Building a gravity line across the highway and go to build the Northwest Industrial uh, UGB. Uh, if we combine both of those, the only reason we have to create some stations in our town and urban plan now is because growth pressures from Eagle Creek East were imminent. So we see a lot of development from Eagle Creek. I'm really uh, interested in that Folsom drop because of the fact there is no residential anywhere near that. Your drop is 1,900 feet to the river, which is always nicer at the closer it is, obviously. Um, and for future growth, knowing that Deuce is right up here with all that, like you said, it, to me, <laughs> it, it's a no-brainer. I mean, Folsom looks to be the least impactful and at the same time, the most needed at this point since we're looking at the growth in that general area. But that's just my opinion. I mean. So um, if, we, if we were to move to Hypo or Folsom, um, that gravity trunk is gonna have to go through. Um, I mean, it, it looks like there's a lot of different properties between there and there. Uh, how much of a, how much of a uh, hindrance, how much of an issue do you think that's gonna be getting you know, getting all of those property owners on board with us running a gravity trunk through their property. It's difficult. Uh, I think the cost of that pump made is maybe 200 plus is what I think I need 300. I think they have the negotiating the property. However, when you do that, what you're building is future sanitary sewer service in that area. So anyone out there is interested in ultimately becoming part of the city and development, that's providing the infrastructure for the sewer. So I would think that a lot of the property owners would be interested in that. Maybe some who simply don't want to be part of the city. So, so yeah, no, it certainly would be a challenge. And it would be time consuming to negotiate and start the process. Is there property available on Folsom Road at all that we could negotiate with or not? You know, I haven't looked at any availability of property. So I think there's there's always property available. Not really a question, more of a, a statement and a request from the city staff. I guess when I look at the map and I look at the idea of where to put, I mean, any of the three options outside of what our existing shop is, um, I see neighbors who we don't represent, they don't have an opportunity to vote for us. And I would really feel beside myself if we made a decision to put a wastewater treatment plant 
around any of these neighbors on Farmstead or up on, by Hypel or up by Folsom uh, without getting their input, especially since they don't have an opportunity to vote up for us as representatives, but we're gonna make decisions that benefit or that impact their property. And I would really like to get more involvement from the neighbors on Folsom, Hypel and Farmstead before I'm comfortable making any decision on how to proceed. Uh, I just agree with her on that one. Getting the input from them is actually quite important for them putting something on the property. So um, no matter where we put it, there's gonna no matter where we put it, it's gonna cause some disruption. But at least having given a chance to have a say, you know, who we bring a ballot in there. Okay. Uh -huh. Is is uh, getting community input? Is that part of the negotiating process for the easements? We have had feedback from the property owners across the street on the farm. So they generally are opposed to getting away from signal back to the area. We understand that that's dangerous and that they have commercial interests involved as well as residential interests like that. So everyone's gonna have the same concern. So I mean the, the key would be to try to locate as far away from any residential as possible, maybe even further than that. No matter what you do, it's a challenge. But that's the when you do that and achieve that goal, you've laid the foundation for the next 50 years or so. So I, I referenced the city of San Diego before, you know, there on Yarrow Road, it's miles out of the city, very nice, isolated area, and very little throughout. Yeah. Yeah, you mentioned something really important about planning for the next 50 years. So where we see the current UGB, we all can assume that in the next 50 years that UGB is going to move. And when it moves, the first place it's going to move to is probably logically to Hypel uh, or even Folsom if it really was going quite far out there. Um, that being said, a lot of that land, if it were to be within our UGB, would be prime residential land. And if we're looking to plan 50 years out and we decide to put a wastewater treatment plant on either Hypel or Folsom, we're almost automatically making that an undesirable or less desirable location for that residential growth to expand to. So I, I guess when we're really planning far out into the future, I wonder if Folsom is far enough out there. I guess I wanted everybody else's opinion on that. for you on the Folsom one. You talked about getting rid of the open pit sewage um, type system that we have now. How is that going to affect, pardon me, the smell? Would that be a major change in how that, um, that issue has been you know, such a problem in the past if that were not to be included in this part of it? Well, the open, the open sewer pits that we have now, you said those would go away. If we move to the Folsom location. If we go to any location. Yeah. Okay. The so new membrane plants require you to cover it up again. Yeah. Because you can't already debris. Debris is in needles and that kind of thing cause damage to the membrane. And my question was, would that help with the smell issue? That we well, have? it allows us to collect the smell much easier. Yeah. And so well, I was, I think I've talked before about the best success we've had in, in odor control. We tried a half a dozen different sets of colors, chemicals, all that. Organic systems, and the best we have found is just to collect it and shoot it up in the air and it tends to wind drift above the tree line. So we collect six or seven thousand PFM, cubic feet per minute, at the county plant, maybe five different locations. Send it up in the air, we put it in three at the top of the stack, and it adds another two times or so to flow. So by the time it gets to the end, it's shooting out at uh, maybe close to 
18,000. Yeah. I toured that plant and I couldn't smell anything. I, so well, it must be worth it. Yeah. I was downtown. Yeah, yeah. Um, so just out of curiosity, because I don't think we actually asked this question yet, and there might be the reason for it. Um, have we looked at trying to talk to PGE about possibly moving it up a little bit when we're, you know, we have a bunch of our power area up there and a bunch of dead air on the lake, or even across the river, so much as much more. We're talking to even here in the residential. We did talk with PGE. I think Denise had a conversation with PGE. Uh, Randy Ely, I think, was our climate expert on it. Uh, because it seems to me ideal, it'd be an ideal location to put the plant on the access road to River Mill Dam. Mm -hmm. You know, we go to we go River Mill and turn on the dam access road and use that triangular land right there. PGE was not interested in that at all. So I think whatever we do, it would be inexpensive. Mm -hmm. It would be great to talk to him about the what if that's the river? Is that something that's doable? So if we were able to find land across there, because there's not a lot of homes on that side of the river. Yeah, and there's there's well, county property and just the park and stuff. And I will work a deal where it's not going to affect anything there, but we can put it across the river. So you think it's going down the west side of the river? Yeah, I'm just kind of looking at the map here, and I'm noticing there's not a lot of homes, so that might reduce impact on potential urban growth, you know, future residential and things like that. Um, I, I just said just an idea. I don't know if that's even something we can do. I want to see the top Major challenge is Google to avoid our plant across the river. And it extends to the cross the river. Okay. I, I kind of think that the wastewater plant, you know, it's your responsibility. So it's pretty hard to think of the community across the river accepting that, taking on what they're going to consider a city's responsibility. But if you could, that'd be great. I think crossing the river is very expensive. Okay. Mm -hmm. Some more questions? So, from, from the options that you gave us, I mean, the Folsom one to me makes a lot of sense. It does. And, and you know, I agree with, with Councilor Dunsmere. We could look further north. If there's anything up there, that would be great too. But I also feel like a, a certain sense of urgency as well too, especially given that we've got more subdivisions planned, we've got other annexations coming in as well too. Um, I mean, if we were to get the process started now, what, what would the next step be um, in order to get things going? Because none of these, Folsom, Hypel, Noble, the Industrial Park, none of them seem like a slam dunk. The only slam dunk that we have is the existing shop site at this point, which is a good fallback. Um, to go to, not ideal, but it, it is a fallback. So if, if we were to get something going now, um, pursue Folsom, and then we hit a barrier, something along those lines, um, I, I would rather hit that barrier sooner than later so that we can start working plan B, plan C. I mean, that's, that, that's my input. That's my thought here. I would, I would rather make some sort of decision or some sort of Get us pointed in a direction now so that we can start working on things to see if these sites are even feasible. Um, what, what would we need to do as a council? Are we making that decision tonight, Melanie, um, Denise? Or are we just discussing and then let's think about it next We're council meeting? Discussing and bring it back to the next yeah. council meeting agenda and then we'll, we'll go from there. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Okay. So, yeah. I, I think that. Paul's got a little bit of something there that I kind of agree with. And um, I, I, I mean, I agree with what we're kind of hit on in agreement with here. Um, definitely, I think pushing it out sort of is important, but getting those people's input is absolutely critical. But at the same time, I think when we look at these spots, we should try to prioritize what's our mm -hmm. highest priority that we want, we want to work in, what the next kind of that doesn't work with the next one, and we're going back down to what's the lowest priority and start bringing people in from the community to talk to them so we get that input. And then see which one may or may not work because um, I forget who may have mentioned it, but that's a lot of problems to cross between Folsom and Eiffel. It's a lot of people that, that are, might have something to say about running a sewer line underneath their home or in the property in that area. So, um, yeah, and like he's right. It's, I mean, we, we have to get this moving because we're going to be out of somewhat on the time limit to get this back down so that you know, we don't outgrow our sewer system. And it can take years to get it done as it is. So, Getting that conversation going right away is kind of critical. So, 
But yeah, I, I think we should put a priority on what's most important and our fallback to one or the other and see the community has to feel about it. Yeah, but I don't believe the pipeline would be an issue. I think we could Yeah, um, I think we're kind of all on the same page um, as far as, you know, we're looking at the majority of us at least are looking at Folsom Road. I too would like to get the community impact um, or the community, you know, what they what they have to say about it, um, the feedback. Um, but also I too would like to kind of have a tier one, tier two, tier three, Sort of like let's let's try to do this and then have a fallback a contingency plan for each thing that falls through if, if things do in fact fall through because I'm looking at the timeline and yeah it's it's getting pretty close and I'd hate to get into a, a spot where we're gonna have to put a moratorium on building because we can't <laughs> we can't house any more people here because we're running out of sewage space. So um yeah if we I don't know what would the next step be to reach out to the community around Folsom Road or just kind of see what they have to say. And then if we don't really hit any roadblocks, and I'm, I too agree with council, the first thing I thought about was that urban growth boundary is going to get pushed out in the future. I mean, it'll happen way after I'm gone, but it's, you know, it, it'll happen. Growth is inevitable. So. Mm -hmm. But I have had people contact me who are interested in properties all the way out. Mm -hmm. So and they're, they're larger parcels, but they're interested in development. So a gravity pipeline would be right in there, up there, interest. Okay. The uh, treatment plant would not. Right. That's really the job. And the treatment plant is, I'm sorry, Councilor Ricky, um, and that you said that would need, is that what's going to need the full 10 acres or oh, no. just the two? Yeah, we, we get by with two acres. Okay, so okay. We, we've got a larger size. Gotcha. There. So, um, I mean, at this point, I honestly believe that Hypo Road is out. I, I don't even think that's a legit, legitimate option just because of all of the all of the houses down there at Paradise Park. And then um, every every property along along the river there has a house on it, um, you know, going, going north from Hypo Road. Um, I really think that that option is out because that's going to be a big... Uh, I don't think anybody down there's going to want to going to want uh, want that coming out coming out down there. Um, I really think the only two the only two legit legitimate options that we have are where we're at and and down near Folsom Road. Um, I think with all of the input that we've already heard heard from the community over on Farmstead Road, I mean even the industrial park area is uh, it's going to be you know I mean that, that's a that's a lot of people that have lived there a long time and you know don't want that right in their right in their backyard so um i think uh where we're at or furthest north would be the best options for it us it looked like maybe going 2000 feet north of Folsom might be an option to get away from Folsom now what is that improvement i see along the river is there a golf course down there or uh, yeah that's a golf course where at just north of Folsom along the river that lighter color along oh. the river well, the golf course is is golf up just for the yeah, it's it's it's, it's just just north, yeah. just north of Hypo Road. Yep, it is. It's right there. You can see yeah. it. Oh, okay. Like right where forty five hundred is written. Right. Joel, did you have something you want to add? Uh, yeah, and uh, I kind of look. I'm just looking at all the houses on Hypo Road. I, I kind of agree that we're going to have a lot of kickbacks from Hypo, mm -hmm. so 
but like I said, no matter where we go, we're going to get kicked back. We've already gotten kicked back with just considering the reason where it's at. We're getting it kicked back from putting it on farm. So no matter where we go, someone's not going to be happy with it. It's a sewer pump. You don't want it anywhere. You don't want it near a river. You don't want it near your home. And we're not going to find it out in you know 100 miles from everywhere you put it. So we're going to, someone's going to get pissed off. I know it sucks. We're, someone, we got to we got to live with that. But I don't. I, I can agree with Heifel. It's it's a long distance to the river. Um, there's going to be a lot of extra negotiating. Um, so it's, it's going to be a pain. So I can agree that's probably going to be the hard one to get through. Uh, my question actually originally was for this uh, for the city uh, worker group. Can you guys tell us how what's our growth rate on our urban ground urban growth boundaries been over the last ten years or so? Uh, what percent are we growing at the EBD? When's the last time we moved it? So we can kind of get a projection when we might be looking at the our future growth. We have a lot of uh, UGB left for um, residential areas. And uh, the last time we moved it was about 12 years ago, I think, or when we expanded it for the industrial park. So how, how that's the only time since that? I've been here. We added, I think we added 130 acres. 130 acres. And so, that, that's you know, since I've been here in my 30 years, it's the only time we've ever expanded the so UGB. In, in, in 50 years, you think we're going to hit Folsom Road? Um, I yeah. <laughs> I can't say. What was our growth uh, right now? I think we're coming in at 6.8%, which is unheard of for our area as far as yeah. the um, So you put that into perspective. We, we still have a lot of um, urban growth boundary for residential uh, to the east left. So I don't see residential needs. Of course, we'll get our housing needs analysis that will show us for 20 years. And then, um, but I think right now we're good, especially with all the mill property that we have for commercial and and other. So, and if we do hit that, we do do to hit out the pulse, and that could be on the latter part of the every fifty years. Would you agree? I would, yeah. I would think so. so we might be looking at putting a new plant in somewhere, anyways, or expanding. No. So. Um, I think this, from what I'm hearing every other year, is Folsom is kind of our top top dog to go for. Would you guys agree? It's the focus. I, I think yeah. we could probably, like you said, eliminate hypo. I don't see that as being a realistic um, view there because I know the area I've been in, and there's a lot of residential down in there. A Paradise Park, like you said, is really big, and if you get a lot of flashback, I don't think that's going to be an option. And uh, as far as the industrial park, I think we have heard a flashback already of that one and on the opposite side, not to mention the fact that I think Mike Park at this point, those are prime properties going on the market. They're going to be hugely expensive. We've already talked about that. So that might be an option we want to stay away from. So the existing and Folsom is really the area I think we should focus our attention um, and get started as soon as possible so that we can see what this is going to take. I'm looking at maps, and I think that's just a farm. I think it's just a hay field. It's that's that's ideal. It's uh, there's really no houses along that whole area. The Eagle Creek Lavender Farm is south, which might be a place. One of those places might um, want the affluent pump to, because we yeah. talked about pumping the affluent right. to the golf course, which it right. would be fairly close, you know, something like that. So right, yeah, there may be people that want your effort, yeah, for mm -hmm. irrigation. What's our next road up from Folsom? Is it, oh, you Dowdy? mean Dowdy, Dowdy Road? Yeah. Dowdy kind of goes Dowdy. Yeah. 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 Dowdy kind of goes up and then yeah. goes back yeah. around. Let so so me suggest got, that I remove Hypel altogether from the report. Yeah, just I, I, think so. I think so. I think so. And we won't, we won't antagonize anybody. Yeah, we'll keep the industrial, but the the uh, Hypel definitely needs to be pulled out of that. Um, just from what I know, I don't think that's going to be an option we're going to be able to deal with. Okay. Um, and just north of Folsom, you've got Eagle Creek Golf Course and then Bonnie Lure State Recreational Area yep. and State Park as well, too. So it's, that seems like that would be a challenge. Well, yeah. Bonnie Lure got it's, hit pretty hard with the fire, too. So that, was, that was pretty bad. But Eagle Creek is one of the places that might want the affluent for mm. watering also. The golf course. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. Let me encourage you too. A new treatment plant, they're not not like the old plants. So mm -hmm. we can't actually go the extra step and, and cover all the tanks. I mean, we're covering 80% of them. We would normally have an open tank or two for sludge primarily. If you keep it aerated, it doesn't smell. But the process is you shut the air off for a day or two 
to let it settle and then you hold sludge on a very, very spendy or very uh, smelly operation. Yeah. But the normal plan, you keep it oxygen, keep the oxygen levels up and you cover everything and the plant will look nice. So it'll, it'll be a nice looking facility. It, it won't really alarm you by having that as your neighbor. Knowing what it is, is going to be more alarming than actually seeing what it is. Right. If, okay, so I know this might be beating a dead horse, but if we stay where we're at now, if we stay there now, the stuff that you can see from the road is, is coming out, right? You will not see it from the highway. Okay, right. so that stuff that you can see from the road That's right. and it, it and visibility from the river. Well, we'll have a fence on that side. So just the elevation difference won't allow you to see the structures. Okay. You'll see a nice fence along the walkway. And we can plant trees, we can do. We can do anything. And we do have a good stand of trees from the highway. That's why we can hide everything behind the trees from the highway direction. Okay. And we're, I mean, we've already established that we're handling that smell issue just by shooting it up into the air. That's the, the issue that. is going to be gone. We would recommend that. It's a good solution. Yeah. Okay. Um, the challenges we'll still have with that, so I want to point out. Um, the challenges we'll still have with that, I want to point out, though, is that we'll be losing, pretty much lose portal parts from what the last thing I saw. There. And um, that we, we lose that entire riverfront for any future development. So, we, so that's, that's a challenge, it's not to mention the residents, they like to have moved out in that area though, despite they won't be seeing their smell. You know, I've talked to some of them, they prefer not to be there anymore. Well, so you we're, got, we're gonna have those kickbacks because those are the three opportunities. You got two properties there that there's no interest in developing already. Uh, the Forest Service, the Emirate has no interest in doing, doing anything there. They, don't, they purchased the property, but there's no interest in actually developing it. And then there's the property next to it, next to it, the big open lot that's owned by Reliance, and they have absolutely no um, interest in doing any development at, in that spot. So yeah, that's currently right now, and that's been two years since the building has been on the market. So we're talking a fifty year. So yeah, that's the big one. And that would shut it off. And Emmer bought it for an investment. He's not. He's not going to develop it anyway. He's going to sell. Yeah, yeah we're talking. We're looking at fifty years. So that's fifty years. He's guaranteed you won't get that spot back. So that's what I'm, that's what I keep looking at is a fifty year mark. Is, let me let me add two things to that conversation. One is the other thing you should consider is we're paying 80% of the cost of providing service all the way to Folsom. So if we do build it at the plant site, we're going to spend 80% of what our cost would be to build it at Folsom, only we're not providing the service for our expanded urban road bed. So it's even if it doesn't happen in 50 years, it's good to have your plant a mile out of the city. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. In fact, it'd be ideal to to not get there for a hundred years, keep your plant away from your residential development. <clears throat> and so, um, and this could kind of go technically when you are, or when we say Folsom, we mean the general area. I the certain, road yeah, I certainly Canada. don't mean Folsom. Yeah. Ideally, it looks like if we went past Folsom far enough to just get off the road and back into the uh, undeveloped area would be best. Mm -hmm. but, but just to ch chime in, if we go out to Folsom, it won't be the city shop. It will just be right. Yeah, that um, would be a question. Right. Yeah, so we'll so, still have the shop. Right? Just, just so. how far is roughly the city area of Dada from there to the city? The docking is out of five five miles roughly. Um, it's about I would say it's about seven thousand feet to Folsom Road from the UGB line. It's nine thousand feet to that dot I have shown there at the industrial park site. My thought is, if it's, how far is the drive to? The question is, why I couldn't we go to the city shop with it? Maybe um, if it's not too far to drive, it's, it's 5.7 miles. That's not that bad. I mean, if we put them out there, we could still do it because I might that still removes them where they're at and it still combines them. I think it's a great idea. Is there, is, there, is there another reason why we couldn't put them out there? Because having them on site with that as well is a good idea either way. Yeah, way. they're just far away from the water plant, and I, it's just, I don't know. I mean, I, I wouldn't think they want to be out would, that far. I think they would not be responsive. Mm -hmm. It'd be difficult to be responsive to the little things that, that need to operate the city. I think you simply would need to find another little acre and a half site somewhere and put them there. You could you still use the site for public work storage, equipment storage, that type of thing. You wouldn't have to store all that in the in-town facility. But for the day in, day out, you're going to want an office, I think, in town and be responsive by being a mile away instead of five miles away. 
start bringing them closer out to the industrial area with the public works building, I think would fit that whole area anyway. I mean, we're talking a smaller parcel. Um, to find one that would fit, there's many different people involved along that area, is more likely for the public works. So I'm not as worried about that. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Okay. Well, we thank you. You've definitely given us some clarity and you've done some work here. Okay. <laughs> this is a lot more options than we had the other day, which is good all around for everyone. And I thank you for bringing it back to us with okay. clearer and more concise information that I can really understand and know what my options are. Sure, uh, we I think the council feels better about this now hearing what we do have and the choices we do have. Um, are you all comfortable? Are there any other questions you'd like to ask him before we let him go? No, I just I'm really curious to hear what Paulson has to say. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Denise will bring us back to us at mm -hmm. our next for um yeah. I'll work with Kurt. Should I simply hold tight on the document itself, or do you want me to clean it up and finalize it for this discussion um, uh, and bring well, it back for approval? What do you think, guys? I really want to hear citizen, or I'd like to hear public feedback before making any finalized decisions. And that's personally. still going to be part of the process, right, Denise? That's not something we're going to, we're still going to have to give public sure. feedback and everything sure. before anything happens anyway. Is that right? This just starts the process. Well, this would give you a, a long range plan. This is your goal. So there's a lot of hurdles to cross before you get there. Yeah. And that would be those stakeholder meetings. Yeah. And, that, and that would be okay. Anybody? Yeah. Personally, I really like the idea of exploring over by uh, north of Folsom, yeah. especially right where that bend in the river I is. And I, I like really that. love the idea of exploring that because uh, not only is that area you know, not likely to be developed in the next 50 years, you know, like right there at the line of it. Um, but I also don't see anybody else over there currently that's going to be majorly affected. Um, but I would like to meet with the stakeholders of Folsom Road and see how they feel about it being there at the very end of it. Okay. Okay. So Denise, I think we're in agreement uh, to bring that back. And yes, clean that up. And maybe that Would you like me to clean process. it up and bring you a document that has it all yeah. concise? Okay. Yeah, so we appreciate that. All right. Thank you. All right. Is that it?